So we now need to actually charge the user. We've managed to submit the form on our premium page, but we can, can't charge the user just at the moment. To do that, we need to do it on the back end. Uh, we need to supply our private key. We need to pass in that token to Stripe to actually make the charge. So we're going to be using Stripe's official PHP library, and this is available on GitHub. So it's github.com, Stripe, and then the uh, repository name is Stripe PHP. If you've not used GitHub before, don't worry too much. This is probably the most complicated part if you're very new to development, but we're going to be pulling the dependency in with Composer. So you're going to need to go ahead and install Composer. It's basically just a dependency manager for PHP. So go ahead and download that for your operating system. And we're going to be using the terminal to actually pull in this dependency. It does sound a little bit more complicated than it is. Don't worry too much. So to install with Composer, we use a composer.json file to manage the dependencies for our application. And in this case, it's telling us to pull in one dot star of Stripe's PHP repository. So let's go ahead and create that file now. So inside of premium, we're going to create a new file. I'm going to call this composer. And this is a JSON file. Now, as long as you have composer installed and on your command line, you can use composer and this works for windows as well. So don't worry, uh, don't be put off if you're not an, o an OSX user. And obviously you can use this on Linux as well. So composer is working. So I'm inside of the premium directory that my composer.json file is within. So over on composer.json, we need to define which libraries or dependencies we require. And in this case, I've already pasted, uh, copied these from the GitHub page. It's Stripe, Stripe PHP 1.1 star. So now that we've got this composer.json file, we can actually go ahead and install these. So I'm going to use composer install. Now, once that's uh, entered, we're going to see everything uh, do its thing and it's going to download and uh, put them dependencies in a vendor folder for us. So you can see that the vendor folder has been created over here. Everything went well, so it's good. So vendor now contains the Stripe code. So we've not had to manually copy everything over. It's all done for us and it's really easy to manage this way. If we ever need to update the Stripe uh, library or update all of our dependencies, we can just do composer update and that will, that will run that for us. So what we want to do now is we want to load in the Stripe library to be able to actually make a charge in the back end. So to do this, vendor, if you look in, uh, sorry, composer, if you look inside the vendor folder, has this autoload.php file, which is really useful. So inside of our init.php, where everything else is included, I can go ahead and up here, require once vendor autoload.php. And that is composer's autoloader. Simple. So now, even though not much is going to look different on our page, wherever we are, we have loaded in all of the dependencies that our project requires. In this case, it's just Stripe. So on premium charge now, what we can do is we can use the library's functionality to actually make a charge. However, we've not set our, uh, our private key. So remember, we're storing our private key here. Now down here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the Stripe package that we've just pulled in to set our API key. So we say Stripe, then we have a static set API key method. And in here we pass in our private key or our secret key. We know what that is, we've stored it here. So we do more or less the same that we did for the JavaScript library, except this key has to stay secret. You can't let anyone see this. So we say Stripe and then we say private. So now our API key is set and inside of premium charge, we can use this token and pass it through to Stripe to make a charge. And this again is super simple. Stripe makes this really easy. And we can look at the Stripe API reference to see this. And we can actually just copy and paste this code really because it is very simple. So the code that we need here is this Stripe charge create, but we're going to do a couple of other things as well, uh, just to make sure that we can catch errors along the way. So inside of premium charge, the first thing we really need to make sure that we do is make sure that this Stripe token is set, because if it's not set, we can't pass this to Stripe. So I'm going to say if is set. So I'm making sure that this is set here. 
then we do something here. So I'm going to store the token in a local variable just here. So I'm going to say dollar underscore host stripe token. So that's the same token as we've seen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a try catch block to catch any exceptions that are thrown by the stripe charge object or the, or the stripes library, if you like. So inside of try, what we want to do is paste in that code that we just saw over on here. So let me explain exactly what this does. It's basically creating a charge here. I'm just going to change this to a shorthand array. With uh, basically passing through the amount again. Now you might be thinking, well, we've already specified it here. Well, this isn't sent along with our request. So we need to redefine how much we're charging the user. So make sure that this value here is the same as this value here. That's really important. The currency we know is GBP. The card here is a little bit um, misleading. This isn't a card, this is the token. So all we do is we replace the token like that. And we've got a comment here, obtained with Stripe.js, which we know. Now the description here is just the description of the charge. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say that this is user email. So that's from our user variable in init, which by the way, we need to include in here. So let's say require once, app init.php there we go so just to recap we're trying everything inside of this block we're catching any exceptions which we'll look at in just a moment we'll look at one particular exception we're using stripe charge which is part of the library that we pulled in here we're creating a charge we're passing through an array with the amount the currency because that's obviously important the card which is the token that we passed through from our form and the description just here so not only that, we also want to update our users. Let's look at this exception first. I'm going to catch a stripe underscore card error exception. I'm going to call that E. Now, basically, this means that the car, uh, user's card has been declined for some reason. So you can do something with the error here. Uh, you could go ahead and extract the error code, perhaps, or uh, Stripe does have user friendly messages for this. Go ahead and look this up in the uh, Stripes uh, API and just find out what you can do with this exception that's thrown here. Otherwise, you might just want to redirect with some kind of generic message or something like that or log the error uh, as well. So I'm not going to go through this because depending on your application, it could be different. So we've basically charged the customer here. This will actually charge the user's card. But now we're going to update the actual user's table to set that premium flag to one. So I'm going to say db query. So I'm not using prepared statements here because there's not much point. And we're going to update users. And we're going to set premium equals one where the ID equals. And then we have access to our user object, remember, an ID here. You might want to go ahead and perhaps cast this to an integer. Uh, or do that somewhere else. But in this case, I know that from my database, uh, this value is unlike this field here is unlikely to contain a value that could uh, result in an SQL injection. But obviously, always take security into consideration. So after the charge has been made, we want to redirect somewhere. So you can redirect within here. I'm going to redirect down here. So I'm going to do a header redirect, and I'm going to go to index.php and then I'm going to exit. So again, we're grabbing the token that's sent through, we're charging the customer's card, we're updating the um, premium flag. By the way, if an exception is thrown here, this part won't be run, it will just catch this here. And that's why we're doing this within a try block because uh, obviously if you uh, have some kind of problem charging the card, you don't want to run this query because it's going to update that user's, uh, update that user's account. So let's go ahead and test this out then and see uh, see how this is working. So let's recap right from the index page. You're not premium, go premium. So we know we're definitely not premium. So I'm going to hit pay with card and I'm going to use my test visa card. And I'm going to enter expiry and my CVC. I'm going to hit pay, to, uh, pay 10 pound. So that's going to validate. And once it is, we're then passed through to our premium charge page redirected back to index and it now says you are premium. 
So the first thing that we're going to check then is inside of our database, when I refresh, that premium flag is set to one. We know that because we're seeing this message. But also over on the, um, let's find my account here. If we give the dashboard a quick refresh, we should see that we have a 10 pound charge. And there we go. So we've got all our stats just here. So we've now basically taken the user from the journey of not being premium to a very basic page with a very easy to integrate Stripe button. They've entered their card details. They have uh, made the payment. We've updated their details in the database and they've been redirected back and they are now a premium member. So that is how easy it is to do a one-time premium membership with Stripe. Just remember that when you do switch this over to production, make sure you actually have a valid Stripe account with all of your relevant details. Make sure this is set to live. And then once you are live and you're ready to start charging users for real, make sure you're using your live secret key and your live publishable key, which will obviously be stored up here. So that's it. That's how we um, make a one-time charge to Stripe charging users for premium membership.